So, how does this work? Old-fashioned refractor lenses? Tom questioned nervously, looking at the telescope. It looks straight out of a science museum back home with something like Property of the Royal Society, Anno 1745, underneath. I would have you know, this is the absolute best in portable optics. The lenses are shaped by hand and magically smooth to perfection. It's incredibly hard to do, Lincoster replies, sounding more than a tad offended. I couldn't work out why Shani insisted I take it with me. I'm guessing she figured out your gods would be a little different. I'm... yeah. Tom wasn't really sure if that was good or bad. She figured out he came from another world, so... Maybe? Dakota, Nanook, and Apuma had also joined them for the night. Jackie had been content to go model for her mother for a bit of evening work on her armor. Saf taking a nap after a long day. She promised terrible vengeance if someone didn't wake her for a look once the others were gone. Everyone else wanted a look too, so she would get her chance. They had assembled the delicate instrument in the library, carefully getting it up the stairs and up under the open skies at the top of the guard tower. It was once again a damn near perfect night. It was a little windy, but it was clear and still a little warm, even without the direct sunlight. A fine night. Right, first up. Let's find a gate, Lingasta started, as she put her eye on the finder scope, scanning the sky. Tom guessed she was looking at constellations of stars, trying to find a certain one. Looking up, that was certainly all he saw. Some had a little colour, to the point where he wondered if there might be another planet. He hadn't spent much time watching the stars, other than to confirm nothing up there was familiar. With a slight smile, Linkosa came to have found it, as she switched to the proper eyepiece, dialing in the focus. There we go. Have a look. Tom took a deep breath before looking into the eyepiece, being met with a blurry mess. Right, different focus. How do I adjust? Then Costa showed him the rather simple mechanism of releasing the friction lock, then delicately sliding the tube to where it was needed, locking it in place again. It took a little getting used to, but eventually the picture cleared up, revealing what looked distinctly like a ghostly white cloud with a void in the middle. A cloud? Tom had to question. It looked rather nicely round, almost like a planetary ring with other planets. Keep looking. See the flashing? Tom shrugged to himself a little, as he kept looking at the circle of gas, eventually spotting a little dot of light in the centre that was gone as quickly as it arrived. Then another. Then one more. He knew Jack's shit about astronomy, but he had a feeling like this was something he would have heard about if it existed back home. I see it. Are those supposed to be... The dead who made it to heaven. Isn't that cool? Lincoster cut him off. I'm looking at the pearly gates? Tom had to question, in disbelief. Is that your word for them? Lincoster replied, as Tom heard the shuffle of note pages. Yup, and we... can't see them. Tom went, as he kept staring at the odd... sight. This was a good telescope, but still, it was hard to make out much beyond gassy clouds and flashes of light in the middle. Then again, that might be all there was to it. Really? That is interesting. It's quite something when someone big or powerful goes. I got to use this when the Green Elder passed away two years ago. That was one hell of a flash. I don't think you even needed a telescope for that. I was going to ask how you know it's the dead, but I guess that settles it. Yeah, the gates are always observed. It's never good when it suddenly flares up. That usually means we have dire news incoming. You need to come to the Academy or maybe the Church of Ashan. They have the largest and finest telescopes around. I'll be sure to swing by. Right, move over. Ishan never comes out anyway, so we won't get to see her. Lotek might be around though, he's always busy. Tom moved out of the way, looking a tad expectantly at Puma. God of travel and trade. He keeps an eye on those away from home, the elder dragonhead replied. That made sort of sense to Tom, since a god like that would have shit to do all the time. Wait, nope. Oh, what are we here? Well, I guess it makes sense at this hour. You found a Tova, didn't you? Dakota questioned with a knowing glance at Lincosta, who set away, gesturing at the telescope. Well, I know about her, Tom let out as he had a look, resetting the focus for him. Huh? That certainly wasn't normal. Even Tom could figure that out. First off, he had never seen a pink cloud in the sky before. He had to pull back from the telescope to look at where it was pointed using the finoscope to narrow in. It looked like a star to him with his naked eye. Granted, it might be a little big, but still a star. The more he looked at it, though, the more the pinker shoe became apparent. Well, shit. He looked back into the eyepiece to get a closer look. This didn't really feel like a sufficient tool for the job, but it would do. And that was definitely a face. Well, it was some sort of shape with two glowing orbs where he guessed eyes would roughly go, and another wider one where he guessed a mouth should be. I take it your silence means you don't have that either? Lincosta questioned, sounding rather pleased with herself. 
That is going to be a most definitive no, Tom replied. Yet you still have gods? Or at least believe in them? Um, I mean, sure. Let's go with we believe in the gods. It's complicated. What about the other stars? Are they weird too? Careful, she might hear you. We have plenty of stars. They seem to be glowing circles in the sky. Some think they are windows for the gods to peer into the world. I was believe they are portals to the great beyond. Gateways out of this world, if you could somehow reach them. It's a touchy subject, though. I'm sure it is, Tom replied. Feeling like he really wasn't in a position to give lessons on how things work right now. Deciding to let the laptop stay in his bag tonight. As he let go of the telescope, the others came over for a turn. A boomer especially being very excited to have a look. Okay, gods are real. And the fuckers seem to be in orbit. Maybe I should have Jackie teach me a prayer or two. On second thought, maybe a puma come to think of it. Yeah, definitely a puma. Or just anyone other than Jackie. So I just pull this? Ray questioned, faffing around with the different cords. Making the parachute fit had not been that hard, though it looked a little uncomfortable for what was left of her wings. The fact they were mostly gone did help with it quite a bit, though. Don't worry, it's not that hard, Tom replied, as he went over everything again. Pull this, then use these two to steer. Loosen to go down, pull to go up. You get the idea. Normally we do a tandem jump first, but we don't really have the harness for that. That really helped with Ray's trepidation as he swallowed. Well done, dude, Sapphire cursed to herself. We'll be there to catch you if it doesn't work, don't worry. Okay, so I guess here goes nothing? Ray replied, taking a deep breath, clearly sucking herself up. She was down there shaking. Saf guessed it was a mix of fear and anticipation. If she hadn't flown in a decade, even if it was going to be more of a glide, she wouldn't be calm either, that's for sure. Yep, giddy up, Jackie replied, lowering slightly to make it easier for Ray to get on. We are not going too high, are we? Higher would be safer, so yeah, Saf replied. Jackie looking pleadingly towards Tom, who just shrugged with a slight nod. Fine. Well, at least you are light. <laughs> it does have its advantages. Ray cautiously joked before Jackie leaped off the edge, kicking off hard. Oh, shit. Jackie dived a bit to gain speed before she started the long, slow climb. Saf watching to make sure everything was in order. Well, that's the airborne. See you in a bit. I promise she'll be smiling from here to here till dinner. They had talked about having Tom do the jump and just having Ray hang on, then letting her steer the thing, but this seemed more... right. She was supposed to fly, not be carried by someone, fun as that might be. I don't doubt it, Tom replied with a wave, as Sapphire stepped off the edge of the greeting platform, taking to the wing herself. It wasn't that Saf didn't want to carry Ray up as high as possible to give her the most airtime. It was just that she needed to be fresh to follow her all the way down, that was all. And she was in charge of catching too. She couldn't be worn out for that. Jackie, of course, couldn't resist the urge to do some light aerobatics once she figured out Ray was rather easily startled into letting out a shriek. After a few surprises, it turned to laughter as Ray hunkered down on Jackie's back, the two of them getting more daring by the minute, to the point where Sapphire had to remind them the idea had been to get some altitude. You ready? Saf asked, taking up position next to the panting Jackie, after a few minutes of climbing. I think so, Ray replied in a tone that betrayed that she probably wasn't, but it was a little late now. Okay. Remember, just do a bit of free-fall first, then pull it. Okay. Good luck, Jackie added, rolling over mid-air. Ray letting go of a shriek as she plummeted towards the ground. Saf hanging on the wing, looking at her drop. Shouldn't you follow her down? There was plenty of time, Saf replied, as the scream trailed off into the distance below. She watched intently for a few more seconds, tilting her head a bit before the recognisable chute folded up. There we go. See you down there. Up, down, up, down, flight like a clown. Oh, come on, you love it, Saf retorted, Jackie grinning wide as they rolled into the dive to chase Ray down. They found her dangling happily from her borrowed wing, marvelling at the intricate construction. Quite something, right? Saf questioned. It's amazing, Ray replied, mouth hanging open in awe. I'm flying. Look, I can steer. Saf moved away a bit as Ray went about swinging from side to side very carefully, laughing like a little girl all the while. They did have quite a bit of altitude, so she had plenty of time to experiment, Though, as Tom had predicted, the lack of weight made her really rather slow, meaning she soon ran out of momentum to do more fancy manoeuvres. They didn't seem to bother Ray, though, as she held out her arms wide, cheering loudly. How do you feel about taking on a passenger? Saf questioned, hoping that would let Ray have a bit more fun. I... can I do that? Oh yeah, don't worry, Saf replied, as she circled around Ray. Okay then, how? How was it Fengi did it? Try and dive a bit, see what speed you can get. Ray did so, though the result was not really much, so it was up to Saf to time this right. She didn't need to pull Ray through the sky, so a piggyback would do fine, 
but still, Ray was moving so slowly that Sapphire was still out if she tried to match speeds. On her second attempt, Saf was happy with the speed and angle, coming up behind Ray and grabbing onto the big straps that went up to where it all split into the little strings. It wasn't entirely graceful, but it was better than the smack that Fenki had pulled off before. It wasn't the most comfortable position to be in, as Saf wrapped her legs around Ray to try and get a bit better purchase. It would do for a bit though. There we go, all aboard. Where to? Saf questioned, as she made herself as comfortable as possible. Um, left? Ray let out, banking into the turn. Hey, it flies way better now. Yup, perhaps you should have borrowed Tom's weights actually. I'm sure Jackie wouldn't mind. Are you sure? She seemed a little tired. Oh yeah, she loves a challenge, Saf replied with a snigger. It wasn't entirely wrong, but hauling weights up to altitude would be a hard sell even with Jackie, unless they could sell it as part of Tom's training routine. That had clearly started to interest her. It's not bad, right? Not bad? It's amazing! Whee! Ray replied, going into a dive, the chute letting her actually pick up some speed this time before pulling into a hard right turn. It wasn't much of a manoeuvre, but it was something. Sapphire giggled all the while, mainly due to Ray's evident joy. I still need to get him to make that thing faster, Jackie shouted at them as she settled into a banking turn around them. He said she could put an engine on it, like the quad bike or something. Good luck with that, Saf replied with a laugh. What's next? You need a push too? That resulted in a very thoughtful expression from Jackie. A sign that something bad was likely to happen in the near future. Sorry, Tom, Saf thought to herself. There was no way Jackie would let that idea slide easy. Right, those are just for calling. It helps keep the housing cool, Tom clarified as they were discussing how to insulate the power cell. The easy solution had been to just cast the housing in iron with some cooling fins in it, but having bare metal inside would lead to a risk of sparks between the housing and the electrodes. Tom had used glass thus far for that reason. But if this thing was supposed to run day in and day out in a rough environment, you really didn't want the explosive gel stuff in a glass container that gets hot. Why not just use the housing as one of them, then put one electrode in from above? Lincoster questioned, as Tink pondered the overheating problem. Like a control rod? That's actually really damn smart! Let's do that! What is a control rod? Lincoster questioned, sounding like she smelled new knowledge. Let's leave that one for another day. Tom replied with a pained expression, hoping she would let that one go for the time being. She didn't seem pleased, but she didn't press it further. They still needed the whole spiel on, let's respect the tech that could ruin the world, after all. For now, though, it was a matter of getting the lathe done ASAP. Right, then we will use the small fins combined with the water bath so we can measure the water temperature. That can be just be a wooden box that has been waterproofed, I can make that, Tink added in, as Tom said about sketching out the design. Actually, couldn't you get started in the mold for the housing? Junior can be responsible for the box. I want to look at tools. Sure! Uh, what kind of tools? Oh, hello. Tom lets out, as he was assaulted from behind, a distinctly lightweight dragonette jumping onto him and hanging on tight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I take it the flight was a success? Tom knew full well it had been a success. He had stood watching for a while to make sure everything went well. Not that he could have done anything, but hey, it was the thought that counted. It had been at least an hour since he had gone to get some work done, so he had done a pretty good job of keeping it going. It was amazing! Hey, Tom the Huggable, think you can strap an engine to me? Jackie interrupted. Tom turning around to look at her, Ray still hanging on. I mean, there would be a few problems with that. Firstly, I don't have one. You said that thing could make one, right? Jackie cut him off, pointing to the bit of lace strewn across the table. Yeah, it's going to be a while. But you could do it. Look, I have no clue, Tom objected. It's time to have a think about it. There were those guys back home who used a flying wing type contraption with some small jets on it and even a few horsepower would make quite the difference. Maybe, he eventually relented with a cautious shrug. He could literally see Jackie's pupils dilate in perfect sync with sapphires narrowing to thin slits, most likely with fear. Ha! I told you! Yes, I told you! I was right! I was right! Jackie let out triumphantly, doing an odd little dance around Sapphire, who just stood there looking like she had seen a ghost for a second, before seemingly deflating. He said maybe, and it's going to take a long time. Bah! How hard can it be? He already has two engines, just make another one. Oh, could you borrow the one from the quad bike? Maybe the chainsaw? Jackie questioned excitedly, looking at him like a kid begging for a puppy, hoping for a yes. We kind of need those two, Tom objected, not sure what else to say. For what? Jarrett's can haul things around. Okay, maybe the chainsaw, but still, the quad bike has an engine. You want me to strap 50 horsepower to your back from a single cylinder petrol engine that vibrates like a... Vibrates a lot? It doesn't have more power than 50 horses, does it? Jackie questioned in disbelief. It was rare to have her not believe something. It sounded more like someone figuring out they had a whole other tub of ice cream, though. That sounds rather improbable, 
Minkos added in, getting the notebook out. I think you made incredible! Tink interjected with childlike glee. It's an old unit of measurement. You can get the history lesson later. It's a lot, okay? You might have, like, two or something. He went, pointing to Jackie. I don't actually have a clue, but possibly. Jack a furlong stronger than a horse, Jackie went, reaching levels of cockiness that might actually be unhealthy. No, Pie Brain. He just said it was an old measurement. That means it doesn't mean anything, I think, Sapphire interjected, seemingly growing unsure of herself halfway. Yeah, I think a horse has like 12 horsepower. It's weird. You might have two. The quad bike has 50. But I'm faster than the quad bike, Jackie questioned, clearly finding that rather hard to believe. Look, I don't understand aerodynamics. I know some small light aircraft have like less than 20. So to give you 50, but well, maybe the fastest thing to ever fly. Or the deadest. We need something smaller. Perhaps the chainsaw isn't the worst idea, but we need that thing. Fine. I'm going to hold that to you, though. It can be done, and it will be done. I'm sure you will, Tom retorted with a nervous smile as he shook his head. Aye, aye, aye. What about Jarek's? Zarko questioned, sounding thoughtful. Um, bigger, maybe, Tom replied, noticing Tink was already doing stretches for what looked distinctly like a top-down view of Jackie. How does the engine push? Like, with an invisible hand, or...? He invented questions as he gestured to the sketch. Right, okay, we need to get some work done and this isn't helping. And tell you what, tomorrow afternoon, after the kids are done in the library, we'll hold a little lecture on powered flight so you can all laugh at how little I know about flying. Everybody happy? I'm on condition, Jackie replied. Tom looking to the cocky dragon end with a raised eyebrow. Do you have a movie about it? Duh, Tom retorted with a grin. Ray shifting uncomfortably on his back. Tom turned his head to try and look at her. You can't be back there? Sorry, can find the right time to get off. The rumours of what was going down had spread quickly to the point that they had to abandon the library idea, mainly on account of Zarko telling Jerex that Tom might have an idea for how to strap a big engine to him to make him faster. So the blackboard had, with quite a bit of effort, been moved down to the Grand Hall, everyone sitting expectantly, including most of the kids because, well, there wasn't much else going on right now and the people supposed to watch them were in the audience, so why not? They might learn something. Right, so first off, the basic principle of an engine. Since you all know how wings work, and I'm a bit lacking on the subject. Tom opened, picking up the chalk. That got him a few chuckles from the audience before they all shut up. To Saf's relief, he was definitely going with the beginner's version today. And it was actually a rather interesting subject for once. In fact, everything was interesting right now for some reason. Yesterday, she'd been allowed to see the gods through Lincoln's telescope. They had new hundreds, and today was how to make machines fly. So much better than math and doing dishes. Shit, she had to do those tomorrow. God damn it. Fuck it. Planes, here we go. The idea that all you needed to do to make something like this was possible was to turn an axe with enough force was odd, to say the least, but the whole piston idea seemed ingenious. Even Jackie was paying full attention. Linkosa and Tink were, of course, quick with questions, Tom bringing out the chainsaw to help explain a few things. The propeller was also a fun one. It made sense. It was pretty much just like a much better version of a reverse windmill. His explanations of a wing profile left them all a little baffled as to why it needed to be that shape. Their wings certainly weren't. And Tom couldn't come up with a good explanation either, beyond planes don't flap their wings and I think it's more efficient. Right, so you kind of get what's going on now. Anyone want to see what happens when things don't go according to plan? Tom questioned, looking as much to the kids who seemingly got the cue getting very excited. Fuck yeah, Jackie replied. Let's see some crashes. Is anyone going to die? Fingy questioned cautiously. Not today, no. Some might get hurt, but mainly because they were idiots. What happens next? Ray looked nervously to Sapphire. Movie time. You're going to love it, Saf replied. It's like watching a memory. Ray seemed to go from worried to confused as she looked back to Tom, who started faffing around with a projector. A Puma and Lincoster moved the blackboard out of the way, and Tom's cape was brought out and hung up on the far wall.